Hey guys, welcome back to Cupid's Corner. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And this week we've got some great tips and great tricks for you guys to ignite your relationship or to make your relationship better. So let's go over these three tips that we want to bring to you guys today. The first one is teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? It always takes two to tango in all situations and whether it's in business or your relationship or family, we know that teamwork will ultimately get the job done. If you guys are working together as a true partnership, then you guys should be able to get through anything together. If you guys are not and you guys are competing with each other, this could cause problems or you guys might not be able to get the task or goal achieved like you guys wanted to. And this could be in a number of different ways, whether you're trying to get a new home together, whether you guys are trying to level up your relationship as far as romantic relationship together, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of different things you guys can do. But if you guys are on the same page, you guys will work a lot better instead of bumping heads all the time. I do see it a lot in a lot of relationships with my friends or coworkers where they're constantly battling their partner or significant other on scenarios or situations or things that they don't agree upon. And that can be a big problem with a relationship, right? With our I mean, it has to all. find a common ground somewhere in there. I think a lot of this too isn't just with working and family, but huge, huge, <clears throat> just because we're super, super old school, is when it comes to parenting. Because you can't compete with each other when it comes to parenting, because you don't want to be, oh, I'm the better parent, and you know, he, he or she likes me a little bit better because I let them do this or I let them do that. And you know, they always try to play one against the other because that is what children do. Oh yeah. Is they go ahead and say, oh, but mom didn't say yes, so I'm gonna go ask dad. But if you're on the same team, then they know they're not gonna be able to go ask the other one. So for instance, our little one, he'll ask me something. And sometimes I'll say straight up, no, this is not what's going down. And then he'll go to his dad and of course, John says, hey, well, what did mom say? Mom said, no, well, I say no too. Sometimes I'll say, you know what? I don't know, just go ask your dad. And so when he'll go ask dad, and then dad says, what'd your mom say? And then he makes the final decision. So you gotta be on the same team no matter what. You can't go against each other because then you start stepping on toes and it's honestly a complete waste of time. Yeah, it definitely is. And you want to make that solid, like a solid foundation with you guys. That way, nobody will be able to play you guys, especially the kids, right? Because mm -hmm. when the kids think or know that they can do this, they will do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it will probably cause damage to your relationship in some ways. Whether you don't feel respected, that your partner or husband or wife is, is going along with what you're saying. You know, and if there is a scenario which you do not agree with your partner, don't bring it out in front of everybody. Don't show that weakness, okay? Go behind closed doors, talk about the issue. You guys, if you need to, you know, debate about it or whatever it may be, come up with what the resolution is, be on the same page, and then come out and tell that person or child or whoever it is exactly what you guys are going to do or intend to do. Um, even if you don't agree on it at first hand, like, hey, I think, you know, little Pete can do this, or I don't think little Pete can do that. Well, if we go behind doors, we debate about it, and then we come to the same conclusion that, hey, Little Pete should do this or can't do this, then we'll go out together and we'll tell him together. Mm -hmm. And that means that we're united. That shows that we're united and that shows a stronger bond. And you guys will ultimately start knowing and what your partner's thinking most of the time without even talking. If you guys are on the same page, like me and Charisse, like we're on the same page in the majority of different we things. We don't have a choice. We have a business together right. and we have multiple employees. Right. So this goes for a lot of different things. Right. You know, these employees can go ask me something and then go ask John something and get two different answers. But that's, I mean, ultimately not what happens. Right. You know, you, me and John are usually on the same page. So it makes it a lot easier to work together, obviously. But that's just a scenario of how oh, yeah. different things can play out. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's a big, big thing. Be on the same team. Do not separate yourselves like yep. that. Because when you do, it will show some weakness to people and it will take advantage of that. So make sure you guys are showing strength, unity, and being a team and showing teamwork, okay? That's a huge one, right? That's a big one. The next thing is making your significant other feel significant. 
Now, the way that I want to explain this is, you know, I guess Sharice brought up a great example earlier today, mm-hmm. and I kind of forgot about it until she did. Oh, I don't forget. But when me and Sharice first got together, <laughs> I knew a lot of people around the area or around, they would come up and say hi to me, and I would start talking to them, you know, without even thinking about, hey, I need to introduce my significant other or who this person is with me. You know, because ultimately, the thing that I thought about, it wasn't, no, I, I didn't want to not introduce her. But I thought, you know, in my mind, like, I already know this person, they already know her, like, kind of thing. You I know? always introduced him. So, it, just it was it was just a thing I like that. <laughs> I mean, I got over it real quick. So, I, I you know, I mean, I obviously I'm very proud of Sharice and everything like that. She's my partner. But, you know, when you're going through and you're learning each other and stuff like that, you're going through some of these different scenarios, that's where you will pick up on some of these things. So, that's the big thing. So, make your significant other feel significant. Make sure that people know that this is my partner, this is my significant other. That will ultimately, you know, steer off some trouble too, because mm-hmm. people might think that you might not have a wife or a husband or whatever it is, and they might start flirting with you or trying to, to go that route. True. You know, it, this will detour some people in those areas. It might not detour everybody because some people just don't care. Have no respect. Which is very disrespectful mm-hmm. to the relationship at hand. And if somebody does that to your relationship, then ultimately that's a bad thing, and those people could be toxic to your relationship. And you probably want to get away from them or not have them buy your relationship if you want that relationship to last. And that goes for a lot of different people, you know? Yeah, I agree. So at that point, just make sure you're doing that. Now, significant and making your partner feel significant can go in a number of different ways. And the other way, the example that I, I put it was, was that like actors, okay? You have two big Hollywood actors. Let's say it's Brad Pitt and Angela Jolie. These guys are huge. But who gets the number one credit or ranking, right? Who, who's the, the big dog? Of, they're in competition, per se. This goes back to the being on the same team. But not introduce yourself as Mrs. Pitt, or that's Brad's wife, or that's John's wife, right? It, her, she has a name. You know, her name is Cherise. You know, this is my partner. And she's doing other things that I'm not doing. Whether, you know, if somebody, I'll give an example. If somebody's working, right, a, a guy, and he's working in the boardroom 10 hours a day, uh, and the wife is at home and she's got five kids, the house, she's doing all these different things. Well, that's a job too. You know, and at that point, she needs to be recognized for that. And they play um, ultimately very significant roles um, in what's going on in the relationship. And this could be a number of different things. I just gave a couple examples that I thought offhand. You know? Um, I mean, honestly, guys, I am going to just put this out there and I'm sure it'll probably mean a lot to John. But you have to remember also, I mean, me personally, I'm a female entrepreneur. I do a lot. I'm a mom. I'm a female entrepreneur. I'm a wife. I'm a lot of different. I play a lot of different roles and wear a lot of different hats. And it does become a little bit complicated sometimes, but I juggle it well. But you have to remember that you always have a woman and you have a man. Not to say one's better than the other, because I don't believe one's better than the other, especially nowadays, right? Because you got women doing men's jobs and vice versa. So there are no levels of higher and lower powers. But I am going to give a little bit of credit to John because males are usually super alpha. Now, I am an alpha female, but... In this particular relationship, I have to back down my alpha and give him the alpha. But a lot of times, you know, it takes a lot for a guy who is an alpha male to recognize that they still should show that respect to their significant other, whether it's their girlfriend, their fiance, or their wife. I mean, it does take a lot to say, hey, listen, I need to respect this person regardless of what they're doing. Either way you look at it, they're doing something, whether it's at the home or it's in the business or it's at their simple nine to five job. Either way you look at it, everybody's contributing to the same pot. Mm -hmm. So it does take a lot for a male to do that. And that's a really good tip for you men out there because, you know, it is 2020. So you guys should get with the times. Yeah, I agree. 2020 is a big thing. And <laughs> listen, I am an alpha male. I'm Greek, right? I'm old school as far as tradition wise yes. goes. <laughs> you know, I, I think some c- certain things. Um, you know, <clears throat> I think that you know women should be able to cook, men should be able to cook. I, I think on that both levels because if you're an alpha, you should be able to do everything. And the way that I was taught and brought up was, that, listen, if I can't do it for myself, so if I can't cook or clean or anything like that, how can I expect to ask anybody else to do it for me? Now, if they do it for me, that's great and everything like that, but I should be able to do it for myself. Now, there's different roles that people will, you know, etch out, you know, per se in the relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's different responsibilities, and those responsibilities are all important. Because if somebody doesn't do them, they never get done, okay? Mm-hmm. And that just goes along with everything that involves from your work, 
you know, your um, life at home, you know, the kids and all that. These are very, very important things. So I think that's that's a really that good That circles one. back around to teamwork, yeah. you know, just because I might be busy in the morning and in the morning I'm blasting out all these emails and making sure all the girls are ready at work and I spend that first hour in the morning and to help, John goes downstairs and help, you know, makes Peter's lunch. You know, usually that is a female role, but either way you look at it, the job has to be done because the child needs to eat and go to school and the girls need to be at work and work. So either way you look at it, somebody's got to do one thing and the next person has to do the next, but either way you look at it, it's done. So it doesn't matter how you get the job done or how you split it or how many ways you split it. As long as it's even, you guys both agree on it and you get the job done, that's all that matters. So the third topic, health. Keeping your partner as healthy as possible. This one is a really, really important one, especially here at Titan Medical Center, because we want to keep all you people healthy. We want to keep each other healthy as possible. And if you guys need help with that, all you guys got to do is call or text us, 727-389-3220. We have a number of ways so you can stay healthy with your partner. But this is very important because without your health, you have no partner, you have no life, you will not get out of bed because you'll be in your deathbed or in the hospital, or wherever it may be. So you don't want that for your partner. So you want the best for your partner or you should want the best for your partner. So at that point, them being the healthiest they possibly can um, can increase uh, as far as the relationship goes a lot. And let me tell you how. So if your partner is usually the healthiest they can be, they're physically gonna be able to give you their best, mentally gonna be able to give you their best. They're going to feel their best, overall feeling good. They're going to be in good moods usually most of the time, right? Emotionally, physically. So these things are very important. And this all has to do with health because when people don't feel good, they just don't feel good. And the attitude could come out as far as that goes. They not physically be able to do anything. They might mentally be down. And let's say depression, that's a big one that's out there right now that a lot of people deal with is depression. And they wonder, how can I you know, help my partner feel better and stuff like that? That's where you're getting them and, and, and being truthful with them. Don't let them keep doing things to harm themselves. Whether it's eating a whole bunch of uh, like sugary processed foods or drinking a whole bunch of Coke and you know they have diabetes or whatever it is, right? Yeah. You you're know in the back of your mind that this is not good for them, but you're not saying anything. And then if you do say something, you know, go to them and actually talk to them about it. Don't yell at them about it. Don't make them feel bad about themselves Demean about being them it. About right? It. Go to them and talk to them. Now, if they give you pushback, you got to tell them, "Hey, listen, I want you to be your best. I want you to actually feel your best. I'm doing this and talking to you because I want the best for you." And that will ultimately really help you guys in your relationship because, you know, it, it's some people. So they get in relationships, they get very comfortable, or, or people have to work a lot, so. They make excuses. They can't work out because they got kids, they got their job, they got this, they got. They make excuses because they want to drink a whole bunch of liquor. You know, this is the way that I deal with things. <laughs> so at that point, like, you got to, like, tell them, hey, listen, you know, this is not good for you. I, I, I don't think you should do this. We need to, to look for a healthier activity. Make that time, cut that time out maybe, and help them, like, you know, do an activity together. That way you guys are bonding the same time and maybe you're getting physical activity diet together so you know diets are not starving yourselves but diets are getting on clean healthy foods you know cook for each other possibly you know um you know meal prep with each other you know make some steaks make some chicken do what you guys can to possibly get better health and then you get the bonding experience at the same time because bonding is ultimately just experience that you're having with a different person whether it's your child or your wife or a friend you're going through these different experiences together and that ultimately creates a stronger bond. So that would be my next thing. Health, health it plays a, a huge priority and a huge role uh, in our relationship. And a lot of people that we're helping out there, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people we've helped. One part of, of the relationship, let's say it's the guy and he comes to us for low testosterone, gets his low testosterone up, feels good, everything's coming back, but the partner doesn't feel good. And she wants to feel good like her husband. So at that point, she might need to be looked at for hormones or, or something else that could help her get her health in check. And then when they both get on that level, then it just, it, it's, you know, sky's the limit as far as what you guys can do together. You know, but feeling good should be your number one priority. 
you know, feeling good and feeling healthy and be able to do these things. So I think that that plays, uh, like, like I said, a substantial role in your relationship and your well-being on this planet, right? I agree, couldn't say it any better. All right, so these are just a couple tips and tricks or things that me and Sharice have went through in our 12 years of marriage um, and our child and our family and all these different things that we've done through business and everything like that. We've pretty much seen it all, did it all. Um, if we haven't went through these experiences, trust me, a lot of our patients have, and they've told us these experiences, which lets us give you guys these great examples and some inside information on maybe how to help your relationship be better. So, a little, a little secret. Just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. You gotta tune in every Sunday to yeah. find out these secrets, though. So Sunday, every Sunday, 11 a.m., ABC, you can tune in. There's the Titan Health and Lifestyle Show. And of course, Cupid's Corner, this awesome segment's gonna be on there. And you guys can li listen and learn to some of the tips and tricks that have made me and Sharice love relationship and business relationship very successful. So we wanna thank you guys for tuning in to another Cupid's Corner. We'll see you next week. I will see you next week. 11 a.m., ABC. All Florida from Crystal River to Sarasota. We appreciate you guys tuning in to Cupid's Corner. See you then.